Chapter Seven. The dream is over. I'm sorry. I look at Cassie and then at Sky. I tell myself that she will understand later, that she can't be angry forever. But I know Cassie. Come on, Sky. Cassie takes Sky's arm and they walk away. I feel awful. They're my best friends, but I can't miss an opportunity like this. I look at my watch. It's already five thirty. I have half an hour before the interview, but when it gets to quarter two, I still haven't found where I need to be. Mike said that we were to interview Murphy in his van, but there are so many, and they all look the same. Feeling desperate, I try to phone Mike again, but his mobile is switched off. I quickly look at my watch, six fifteen. I remember what Mike said. Murphy hates people who are late. Why did I have that stupid argument with Cassie? Why didn't I phone her after the interview? Just when I thought I was never going to find where I needed to be, I see one of Murphy's musicians coming out of one of the vans. I start to run, but then a big, strong arm stops me. You can't come back here. A loud voice says. I look up at the tallest man I have ever seen. He is dressed in black from head to toe. A label on his chest says "Security." It's okay, I say, trying to catch my breath. I'm here to interview Murphy for Music Now magazine. Murphy isn't giving any more interviews today, he says. But I've got my pass. Look, I hold it up to show him. He checks my name against a list he has.、Mm, you're late. Your interview was at six. I know. Murphy hates it when people are late. I know. I interrupt. But please, you have to let me see him. But it's no good. He crosses his arms across his huge chest and stares down at me, and I know he won't change his mind. What am I going to do now? How can I tell Mike that I missed interviewing Murphy because I was arguing with my best friend? I stand there for a moment. And my eyes start to fill with tears. I don't want the security guard to see me cry, so I turn to walk away. Just when I think things can't get any worse, I see Mike coming towards me. Before I can explain what has happened, he says, "I've just spoken to another journalist. Chris, the singer Murphy was going to sing a duet with, hasn't arrived. He's really angry and has refused to give any interviews." People are saying that he might not even sing tonight. He's so angry. So that means no one—I mean, no one at all—has interviewed him today. Exactly, says Mike. Phew! That's a relief. I say quietly. I am relieved that it wasn't my fault, but I really wanted to meet Murphy. I have lied to my dad, and my best friends will probably never speak to me again. For what? Nothing. Come on, let's go and enjoy the festival," says Mike, trying to sound cheerful. But I feel awful. Is it okay if I stay here for a while? I ask and try to smile. I'd really like to see the next band. I lie. The truth is that I want to be alone. This was going to be the best weekend of my life. Now it is the worst. If you're sure. Says Mike, "I'll be at the other stage if you want me." He disappears into the crowd. Everyone looks relaxed and happy, and I feel like I'm the only one who is miserable. After a while, I decide to go and find Cassie and Sky. I'll apologize, and hopefully Cassie will forgive me. But just as I'm about to leave, the door to one of the vans opens, and familiar music fills the air. The security man bends his head low and steps out into the rain. He sees me watching. I told you there were no interviews. You're wasting your time waiting here. That music? I ask. I'm wrong. I must be. The music that's playing inside that van. Murphy loves it, says the security guard. What is it? I mean. Do you know who it is? Some girl who won a competition. 
The magazine sent it to him, and he really likes it. So it is true. Suddenly, I don't feel sad any more. I feel excited and happy and proud all at the same time. I step closer to the van, but the security guard stops me. But you can't go in there, Miss. He says, "You don't understand." I say, "That's me. That's my song." Chapter Eight: The Dream Is Just Beginning. What did you say your name was? Asks the security guard. Ellie, Ellie Stevenson. I won the competition. I, I have to make him believe me. For a moment he doesn't move. He looks like he is thinking about what to do. But then he says, "Wait there a minute," and he disappears into the van. After what feels like a year, he eventually comes out. The boss wants to see you. He says, holding the door open. Murphy wants to see me. Murphy wants to see me. What are you waiting for? He says when I don't move. My heart is beating fast and my hands are sweating. I quickly wipe them on my jeans and slowly climb the steps into the van. When I get inside, Murphy is sitting on a sofa, his guitar on his knee. His green eyes are even greener than they look in the magazines. When he looks at me and smiles, I think I will faint. Somehow I don't. A miracle. Ellie, right? I nod. I always hated my name, but the way he says it, it sounds so nice. I really like your voice. Wow, he really likes my voice. I, I'm really pleased. I mean, that's great. I feel my cheeks starting to turn red. Why do they always do that? Murphy looks up at me and smiles one of his famous big smiles. Do you know the words to tonight? Tonight? Yes. I can't talk properly any more. What is happening to me? He picks up his guitar and starts to play. He wants me to sing with him now. Calm down, Ellie. Take a big, deep breath. I tell myself to imagine that I am at home, in my bedroom, alone. I am not in the van of my favourite singer backstage at Glastonbury. Those gorgeous green eyes are not looking at me. I close my eyes and take a deep breath. <sighs> I'm nervous, but soon I'm in a world where only music exists. There is nothing else. I start to sing. And only when the song is over do I open my eyes, instantly embarrassed once more. Terry, Murphy shouts, and the security man appears. Yes, boss. I've changed my mind. He stands up, takes my hand, and leads me outside. Call the band. I'm going on stage, and Ellie's coming with me. What? I can't. There are thousands of people out there, but Murphy doesn't look worried. He holds my hand tighter as we follow the security man towards the pyramid stage. When we get there, Murphy's band is waiting. As they start playing, I turn to Murphy. I have to make him understand that I can't do this. But before I can find the words, they call us onto the stage. The crowd cheers. Everything is so much. Bigger and louder than I have ever imagined, my heart begins to beat faster than ever, and I'm sure that I'm going to faint. But then the crowd is in front of me. When they see Murphy, the audience goes wild. Good evening, Glastonbury. Are you having a good time? A bigger cheer. I'd like to introduce you to a special friend of mine, a young woman who has an amazing voice. And an amazing talent. I want you to make her feel welcome tonight. Everyone, this is Ellie. He turns to me and smiles, and I feel like I'm going to faint. But then the crowd starts to shout, "Ellie, Ellie, Ellie!" Just like in my dream. Then the band starts to play. 
Murphy takes my hand in his. At first my voice shakes with emotion, but then I close my eyes, feel Murphy's touch. The crowd sings with us, and it feels incredible. Now it has started. I don't want this moment to end. When I open my eyes and look at the crowd, at the front I can see two faces I know. Cassie and Skye are there. They are both smiling proudly, and I know that everything is going to be okay. After a final applause, I leave the stage, and Murphy continues with his performance. I watch him from the side with Terry, the security guard. When he finishes, I turn to leave, but then I feel a hand on my shoulder, and Murphy says, "Ellie, where are you going?" His eyes are shining with the magic of performing. Thanks for letting me sing with you. I'll never forget it. Please, don't go yet. His voice is quiet and soft. I'd really like you to stay. He whispers, taking my hand, and when I look into his green eyes, I know that dreams sometimes do come true. But maybe mine was just beginning.